Hey, we're live. If you're watching a replay of this, you could probably skip ahead a couple minutes. This is just us kind of getting started and uh, getting people in and getting Johnny on board. Oh, speak of the devil, there he is. Angel, thanks for joining. Shout out to Angel too. Hello. She helps put all this stuff together. Johnny, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Hold on. Just getting everything set up. This is, this is the beginning of it always. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What happened? I'm sorry. Okay. There we go. Cool. Hello, my friend. How you doing? I'm all right, man. Can you hear me okay? Yep, you're good. All right. Brass cool. Beat and Stick, thanks for joining. Getting to in two weeks. <laughs> How you doing, guys? <laughs> That was the, oh man, that was the funniest thing when like the ad popped up the very first time that had like everybody's name yeah. and I was, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be doing an interview with uh, Bellwether. They're really cool guys. And like, Mike's really cool. And like, <laughs> and, like I'm looking at the rest of the names <laughs> on the list and I'm like, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> like I realized I had to like explain Rasputin's dick to like my mother <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, look, man, like. <laughs> Look, I didn't name them, all right? <laughs> they just happened to share the same promotional yeah. materials. <laughs> no, but I mean, you guys, like, you guys are cool. Like, cheers. Like, <laughs> uh, but that was, a, that was a fun conversation. It was like, well. <laughs> Deep Pockets, Jordan, thanks for joining, man. Idle Existence, thanks for joining. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm just getting all my... Excuse my hand in front of the yep. camera. I'm just getting all my stuff like set up. <laughs> yeah, Rasputin's dicks having a chuckle at uh, our, <laughs> at your expense. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, man. Um, no, but I was like, it, it was cool that I could like. I love the moments when I can like name drop, if that makes sense. Like I love name dropping. I do it all the time. Whenever anybody asks about like, yo, how's the album doing? And I'm like, oh yeah. And then, like, I just use it as a way to, like, get in and start, like, just throwing names around. Like, I'm constantly talking about, like, you guys. And, obviously, I drop names like DHR because, like, yeah, man. I'm in the band. <laughs> so, like, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's um, a good habit to get into, for sure. Yeah. I love it. Like, you know, it's funny. Early on, like, even before anybody gave a crap, uh, like, that was one of my – Wait, are you saying like, one someone of my gives a crap? <laughs> no i'm saying like like you know me like when i got started it was just me literally like no team no nothing just me and a crap amp and an acoustic guitar you know and like even then like every chance i got i was just like because that's the thing that i like i like being able to to like talk about other people it's it, like i was dropping oh, wow. in, yeah I, there's a there's a, a, a community aspect to it, but also it's it's I don't know. It, it it feels like. Do you ever feel like it's kind of a brag too? It's like yeah, yeah. I, I you know I talked to Tyrant Taylor, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, he's always a a fun chat. I was thinking. Yeah. Um, oh, we'll get. Let me just just run through this right quick off the top and then we'll get into it. I, I do have, um, I can't remember how exactly it worked out, but I do have some, well, a whole bunch of questions for you, but let me just quick rattle this off, okay? All sure. right, just want to say hello and welcome to uh, the Bellwether Virtual Live Stream where we discuss music, local Lehigh Valley PA scene, band, social media, and more. Today is Wednesday, March 15th. My name is Mike. I'm the vocalist, guitarist of Bellwether Ritual, and hope you all had a good week. Well, we have a show coming up um, that we'll get to in a little bit because someone else does too. This week uh, on the live stream, we have Johnny Five, the philosopher. He sings for DHR and has recently recorded a solo album and has a newer, heavier project kind of coming up on the horizon. We'll talk to uh, him all about that and more. Johnny, nice to have you back on the live stream. How are you? I'm super excited to be back on the live chat, man. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead. No, no, you first. <laughs> uh, no, I was trying to think. I think you're either the very first or the second live stream we ever did, uh, guest-wise. Um, I can't remember exactly how it went. Uh, 
I, I seem to remember being the second one because okay, I do cool. remember, I think I remember like kind of putting my two cents into one of the live streams and I believe it was before yeah. mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, probably. I, I think. Shout out to <laughs> yeah. Well, you're an OG yeah. either way, so thank you very much. It's glad, it's good to have you back on. Thank you. It's uh, great to it's great to be back. I'm glad you guys invited me again. Yeah. Uh, speaking of name dropping, any name dropping you want to do right off the top, or? Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I already kind of started. Yeah, yeah. Any projects like, that you, you want to? You got let's. I mean, let's name drop some of the people who are yeah. in the chat. I mean, Rest yeah. King's dick is <laughs> in the chat. Like, um, I mean, you got. Bellwether Ritual, it's always great to see you guys active. Like, um, re recently, I say recently, but it was a couple months ago, we had a pretty good show at uh, the Red Door. It was us, DHR, with uh, Iridescence and Fictional Name, both of whom are just, like, really, just really cool people. You read that one. Yeah, I that's was. right. You read that one. I was gonna yeah, say, we were hanging out. Like I was I caught you at that, and that was there was an epic um, not you guys, but there was an epic um, on stage fight, which I thought was interesting. I've never seen that before. And then you guys <laughs> um, played, I think, after that, right? And then uh, I gotta say, one you're one talented frontman. That was like one of the big impressions that was made on me that night. Um, Stop, man! <laughs> thank you, thank uh, you. No, all jokes aside, thank you very much for that. Yeah, seriously. seriously. Um, is that like where does that come from? Is that something that you like are uh, practicing? I know that kind of sounds weird, but like, um, that's a great question. Well, I've always okay. So I've always kind of been a ham. Um, I have my friends and family have all stated on numerous occasions that I have a very <laughs> animated face. So even even when I'm like like right now, even when I'm talking like a serious tone and whatever, like my face is just constantly like making noise as I'm speaking. Um, so that's one thing. I I also I went to school um, and got my bachelor's degree in theater. So like I was behind the scenes doing like audio stuff. That was, like I was really I was really uh, into that. And then um, I also helped, like, build sets and stuff. But I was on stage as well. And, like, I, you know, had classes with uh, with people to talk about stagecraft and, like, acting or whatever. I don't, cons I don't consider myself an actor. Um, even having the degree and everything, um, I just – I love it. it. It's fun. You know what I mean? Like, I was really passionate about it. But it didn't it, – it, it wasn't something that I was – naturally good at like a lot of other people are but when it came to music right like i said um earlier i was you know pretty much doing everything by myself at first and um even as terrifying as it was on stage like like it, it was just kind of natural for me to like gesture towards the crowd and like kind of get them involved because the thing with music and with theater that they both share is this kind of like reciprocating um for lack of a better term energy that they have with the audience it's like if you're having a good show right and you give a hundred percent the audience feels that and they get hyped up and then their adrenaline sends the energy right back to you and it just keeps going back and forth until everybody's like going nuts right and so that's that's um something that I try to do all the time. You know what I mean? That's like, Yeah, it's such a, like, I don't want to say secret, like, that's the goal, right? And it's yeah. so much more hard. It's so harder than, so much more hard than it sounds. Um, do you have, like, a like a bag of tricks or anything you go to? Like, I try to do, like, oh, I got to remember that for next time. That worked really well. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff that I work on is... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's it's a physicality to it, right? One of the things you got to remember, and a lot of especially new frontmen, guys who are like younger than us, they sometimes forget. It's like you got to be bigger, and not because of like some superstar or diva crap, but because like you literally have to be bigger so that the dude in the back yeah, yeah. can see you. You yeah, know. Great point. So like, it's not just singing into the mic and then pointing at the crowd. You got to like 
you know, like you got to swing your arm around and you got to like, this is why this move is so popular. Like everybody gestures mm -hmm. to the crowd. Um, it's about being bigger. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hello, Wetzig. I just saw you. Come on, Lon. Hello. <laughs> I just saw that pop up. Um, yeah, that's, that's the main trick to remember is to like be bigger. Also, it's about kind of figuring out what, and this sounds so lame, figuring out like what you're into, like what you're good at, mm -hmm. you know, like some, some dudes, they're not running up and down the stage like I am. Like I'm constantly moving. Unless I'm like anchored with a guitar in my hands, like I'm all the time, like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And unless you have like a system, like a wireless system, like you're going to be in like one spot mostly, but you can still retain that kind of big energy. You just got to like, just remember that like, so like, like, like if you think about it, like you're actually I have this right here. If you're thinking about it, like you got the guitar in your hair, you can't move and that's fine. But like, as you're singing, like those moments when you're not in front of the microphone, just kind of, like, you give it a little, like, you look at the crowd, yeah. like, you kind of get into the microphone's face, you jiggle your head back, you know what I mean? Like, you keep moving, because, like, that translates to the, the people in the back. And those are, that should be your target when you're the front man. Like, the people in the front, they're right there. They can see everything you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't have to worry about them. They're right there. But the guys all the way in the back, they're the ones that you want to try to connect with, because if you can hit them, you've got the whole crowd. Great point. So um, that is something I struggle with because I, I'm playing guitar and singing. And I think actually that it's the combination that really is hindering because you're kind of locked into the mic. Like you can't hold the mic and walk around with it. So you're kind of locked in place. And then you yeah. have to figure out those times where like it's a guitar solo or some kind of break where you can um, yeah, do something. Uh, I don't know if I should spill the beans or not here, but I think I'm going to anyway. <laughs> Our guitar player, Shane, um, also is an actor, like went to school for it too. So uh, it's interesting to hear like that kind of side of things as well, um, because I, I feel like it, there is so much of it, like it or not. And, you know, everyone like has, like, is on uh, some kind of spectrum about how they feel about it. But to me, that's just the way, part of it and the way it is. And as, like your goal is to entertain. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think of something or do something to to entertain. Yeah, and um, you know, it it also uh, it, it's important to keep in mind, like, you know, I'm a I'm one case of it, right, of being the super animated, like fucking running back and forth on the stage and that sort of thing. You don't have to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like some, like I don't want to make it sound like that's the way you have to do, like, because there are some remarkable things and performers that they don't really move too much at all. Like, there's, like, I mean, uh, I think of powerful voices like Adele, mm. and um, there's um, there's a couple of bands like, oh, come on, just like uh, Blah Blah, and, uh, yeah, and, um, I mean, even, well, actually, we were just talking about uh, This Way to the Egress. I mean, yeah. Sarah Egress, Heck yeah. she kind of like locked behind the piano most of the time yeah, and like sure. but they're it, it's Still they allow their person yeah. They, yeah they allow their personality <laughs> to come forward you know what i mean shout and to that gets Sarah egress. yeah 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 shout out to sarah egress <laughs> heck yeah we're gonna have her on um probably in a couple of weeks i gotta see what they got coming up cool. um cool. yeah how do you know them just um i mean like I've lived in the Allentown, Bethlehem area yeah. for ever. So like, I always knew of this way to the egress. And then like, I, I, I randomly, you know, bumped into them, like just picked up their brain a couple of times on live streams. Yeah. Um, you had Tyron Taylor on, uh, what was that? A couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, like three or four weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, uh and they've always that's that's the thing I love about about those two is that like they're always very professionally like open to all the fans. It's like when when somebody wants a question answered or like they they're looking for some information, those guys are always like really open to like share it. Yeah. And that's yeah. something I really appreciate about them. 
yeah, and they work hard. They got the hustle. Connor, mm -hmm. MF and Pruitt, thanks for joining. Just wanted to shout you out really quickly. What's up, Connor? Time takes a little while. If you have any questions for Johnny, drop them into the uh, comments and we'll get to them. If you see one come up and you just want to read it off and answer it, go nuts. Uh, otherwise, I'll try to keep <laughs> sure, it on sure. it too. Um, all right. So, you're, what, uh, what's been up since that? Um, when was that? Back in January or February, maybe? Or no, yeah. it was over break, right? Yeah, over the kids' break because there weren't a whole lot of students there. Yeah. Yeah, we, um, geez, I can't remember dates. Everything bleeds together, yeah. man. Yeah, um, we had the, we had the show at the Red Door. Um, what have you that was a good time. I'm like, yeah. what's that? No, go ahead. No, all I was gonna, all I was gonna say was, um, like that was actually my first, my first time actually physically being at the Red Door. Yeah. So like, that's a really great venue. I wish that they would have like a constant, like more people coming through that way. Because, like, that's also, it's also kind of a convenient venue uh, in terms of the location. Like, people can get there pretty easily. So, like. Yeah, and the setup is super cool, too. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a, it, and it's, it's just, it's a really nice spot. Like, it's, like, the acoustics are nice. Like, yeah. everything's clean. Like, it's, like a, <laughs> it's almost like kids pay, like, tens of thousands of dollars every year to go there. I know. It's crazy, right? It's wild. It's like when you have money, you can keep it nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So what have you been up to since then? I know you've been kind of in and out of recording for, a, uh, I don't know, the past couple months, maybe? Well, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm finishing the, the final mixing on my first solo album. Um, it's something that I actually started of uh, couple of years ago, but we had to take a, we took a, a really big hit when the pandemic started. Mm -hmm. So then, um, like we couldn't, we just couldn't do anything. Um, I, I go to, uh, Bethlehem and uh, go to Shard's recording studio with, uh, yeah, Matt Monchini. Sure. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, we, we've been working on the project for, for a couple of years now. And, uh, we're finally in the home stretch. We have, and say, a, give or take a couple songs, about half of the 15 tracks uh, mixed. Um, we're pretty much, it, we're, we're at the point now where we are adding details that need to be added or like tweaking something if like, you know, a voice is off. Um, uh, my plan currently is to put out a couple of early release singles. The first one is going to be a song I uh, called Mirror, and then after that will be a second single called Angry Machines, and after uh, about that time when the sec second single comes out is when I'm hoping that like everything will be done, it'll be pressed, it'll be ready for distribution, because uh, as I previously mentioned, I'm doing a lot of this by myself, so mm -hmm. I don't, I wish I had a team to like <laughs> take on some of the uh, aspects of of it but yeah you know, doing things independently that's how it goes that's the way it works yeah, yeah. um yeah. so to how like where does that process begin for you are you going in like do you write demos before you go in or are you um, how do you approach um that? so this this uh this project this album was actually a bulk of the songs that I had, I had already been performing for a couple years. Um, I was, I didn't have a studio, didn't have a studio space. I was just out playing. I was doing bars and restaurants and open mics and what have you. Um, so it wasn't, there weren't any demos, really. It was really just um, these are the songs that I play, listen to them, like I'm going to put them on an album, that kind of thing. Um, all of the so when I got in touch with uh, Matt over at Shards, that was actually through uh, Bill Dwayne, um, one of the members of uh, the High Kicks, and no. he, uh, yeah, uh, Harry Licks and the High Kicks. Um, they're a, uh, they're another band, great group of guys. Uh, cool. Bill is is a friend of mine. Um, he he was actually he also was at uh, the Red Door. Um, 
during the performance with Iridescence and, and okay. Fictional Name. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, sorry, I got off track. <laughs> the, so he got me in touch with Matt a couple of years ago because I was looking for a studio space. I didn't have any gear, didn't have any room in my house. So I needed a place to go to like record and put stuff together. Um, Matt was one of is one of the most intuitive uh, producers I've ever met. Um, I sat down with the dude and he was like, well, what's your experience? And I said, playing live. And that's it. And he's like, all right, cool. Uh, what do you got? And at the time, I think I had like something like maybe 10 or 12 songs ready where I was like, this is the song I need to figure out how to record it, you know? And from that, I mean, he, he basically like just kind of walked me through stuff. The, the best thing about Shard's recording studio is that like Matt just kind of like dials into how you work and then figures out uh the best path for that so like as we were sitting and discussing like how we're going to approach it like it became very obvious that um i really didn't need to explain much i just had to be like well this these are the sounds that i need and he goes okay well you play what you play and then you know we'll go from there um for uh, for instance, all the songs on the album, um, I play all of the instruments except for um, a couple of uh, like kind of sparse uh, keyboard tracks um, that he put on just to add a little like extra to the song. Um, and Matt actually uh, plays all the drums oh, cool. on on my album, yeah, which was great too because I was like. I was trying to figure out how to do that because I am not a drummer. Um, I I play everything else, but my feet and my hands don't get along. So yeah. then um, I, I was think like at first during the process, I thought like I was going to have to hire a drummer. And then he was like, I'll just, I'll add it like to the song. And I was like, cool, yeah. let's do that. <laughs> um, way easier. Yeah. 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 Once we, once we uh, got, like I said, it was like 15 songs. I think I pared it down when when all was said and done. We ended up, I think it was like 17 or 18 songs. But I thought that was like a little much. So I, I pared it down to 15. And uh, yeah, if it weren't for that darn break we had to take because everybody got sick, then we probably would have been done a lot sooner. But <laughs> yeah. Gamer, thanks for joining check out his band Ataraxia. Um, okay, What's so <laughs> let's see here. Um, wow. So are you like, right now you're doing a lot of well, I, I should say you were doing a lot of like covers on YouTube, I remember seeing you do and just kind of like, you're very consistent on social media in general. Do you mm -hmm. have like, are you gonna do you have like a uh, kind of like a release strategy or anything that you're going to kind of yeah. do to launch? Yeah. So, uh, Brian, thanks for joining. Hey, Brian. Oh, also, hello. Is that Gamer? Yes. Hey, Gamer. <laughs> I just saw your hey, y'all. Um, yeah, so here's the thing, Mike. <laughs> trying to Trying to do covers because people request covers yeah. for the YouTube channel. Yeah. And and doing the album and also working with DHR. Uh, I didn't have a lot of time <laughs> to get anything done. It was get, it was the secret to the releasing was that I had a backlog. Mm -hmm. So I had a bunch of videos that I was doing because I was stuck indoors for so mm -hmm. long. Um, people were making requests on the YouTube, um, which was great because that gave me something to do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, DHR started up and I was like, this is great. I, you know, want to get out there and start playing live anyway. Um, I was doing my solo stuff, so that was wonderful. And then rapidly, as the backlog of videos started kind of depleting, I found myself in a situation where it was like, well, in order to focus on all of the uh, projects that I'm doing, Something has to, you know, mm -hmm. give. 
So at the moment, there are no requests happening. I will return to that. That is something that I do like doing. Mm -hmm. um, it's also to kind of connect yeah. with some of the viewers because, like, they, you know, you, you're giving back to them. They're asking for, like, like somebody asked for, like, gummy bears one time. Uh, <laughs> during, yeah, yeah, which was surprisingly a really fun song to play, let me tell you. Oh, hell yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I, like we've been talking about, I'm busy with DHR. I had to uh, get back to the album and put energy into that. And also playing live, everybody was opening up again. Mm -hmm. So playing live with a band and also doing my own solo stuff at the same yeah. time, that alone kind of sucked a lot of my time away. Um, so my plan right now is I'm focusing on finishing the album, um, still doing stuff with DHR. We have stuff happening in May. Um, we've got the Rock and Run, which is um, yeah. it's a, a benefit marathon where it's cool. They pepper uh, bands like us across the the marathon route, and then like the runners go by and we play and like it's <laughs> it's fun. We've done it. We we did it the last time um, that the Rock and Run was was being uh, held, and it was a lot of fun. Like I had no idea. Parents dance to gummy bears in elementary. Thanks for the flashback. <laughs> <laughs> we'll You're welcome, <laughs> Maybe if I if I remember, I'll put the link in the um, underneath this video so you guys can see it if you're interested. I, that was that was a fun that was a fun one. That was also a weird one to learn because I was because I remember watching that cartoon and being like, I don't know how to approach this. So this um, actually that was one of my questions. Let's just quick touch on that a little bit. Like, sure, you, yeah. is that something you look up online for chords or are you just kind of? Uh, like, yeah. Uh, for, for that one, yeah, I had to, for that one, I had to trust the internet and, and go and find the, the sheet music and the chord, uh, the chord charts to play that one. Um, because some stuff you can do by ear, right? That was not one of them. Cause that's like an orchestrated song. Mm -hmm. Like they've got horns and strings going on and i'm like i don't know what to listen to like so um yeah doing the gummy bears <laughs> uh doing the gummy bears theme uh took some doing <laughs> for songs like that my best approach at least personally was that you have to simplify it because mm -hmm. I've, I've been as that's not the first time i've been asked to do a song that you would consider like complicated so like it's just me and an acoustic guitar. Like, you gotta, <laughs> you know. But I think that's kind of also kind of the point, is, like, it, that's an orchestra. That's a million strings, right? Well, that's an exaggeration. That's, like, a thousand strings. Like, you're not playing a thousand strings, so don't try to play it like that. Like, you, you got to pare it down and, like, simplify it. And the, the fun thing about it is that, like, there are times, um, not that song but there have been times where i've been asked to play songs where i'm like oh gosh i don't know if i can do that one but like when you approach it um don't approach it like you trying to play a band's song you're trying to play the guitar part so like and in my case you're trying to play the guitar part and sing so like that's what you're worried about simplify the problem and it actually it helped a lot with like because sometimes I get anxiety about like learning new stuff. I I enjoy doing it, but it's it's like, do, do you have the same thing where like, uh, I think it, more, it more of my anxiety. seems overwhelming at first, right? Oh no doubt. Uh, I think more of my anxiety comes from like playing live and shit. That's way more uh, anxiety inducing for me. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the it's it's a weird phenomenon with musicians. Uh, I, I want to know if it happens to, like, actors or, like, you know, rappers or, or singers as well. But, like, you have this weird thing that happens between, like, when, you, when you've when you got songs and you put them down in your muscles, right? And you don't even need to think about it anymore. And then, like, the cycle repeats and you get to a part where you're supposed to, like, learn new stuff. And we get instantly afraid that we're going to, like, forget how to play. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I don't know where it comes from. It's just this weird thing that happens. Um, or, or, and it's or so it just made me. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it's so bizarre. You just made me think of a good one. Um, I'm afraid. I'm always uh, can be fearful of like I'm not gonna be able to like create something new. You know, or it's not going to be good or something like that. You know, like up to whatever par you're trying to get to. Like that's, I think, yeah. where I, because sometimes it almost feels like you're just kind of sticking an antenna out there and seeing what you can kind of catch in some ways. But yeah, I don't know. I guess that's one of my I, other ones. Yeah, I, I, have, I have had that thought before, too, about, like, is this it? Have I exhausted all of my inspiration? But... I don't, I don't know if it's possible to exhaust inspiration, um, and I'm sure that's I'm sure that's a fear that like other artists have had yeah. in other mediums. Like, my philosophy is, as long as you are constantly, purposefully trying to learn stuff, like you're never gonna run out of inspiration. Yeah. I mean, just um, just a couple of just a couple of days ago, um, Gamer, I saw you that you made a comment. I promise I'll get to that in just a second. Um, just a just a couple of days ago, like I I learned I was learning um, new riffs to play. Right, I was just kind of like going off of like uh, heavy metal and blues riffs and stuff like that. And just from that alone, I was getting new ideas. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like so, as long as you're learning then you'll never run out of inspiration. Yeah. Musicians, I've noticed, always get scared on stage. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Where'd it go? Okay. Always get scared on stage. The way me and my friends go about recording is setting a challenge and laughing all the way. Dude, definitely. You got it. Yeah. G Gamer, that's a great point. Um, you have to have a sense of humor in some respect. Like, I don't care if you're a virtuosic, like, fucking guitar player or if you can play anything by ear uh you're gonna mess up and if you can't laugh about it like you gotta like you gotta <laughs> you gotta reconsider man yeah. like you gotta have a sense of humor about it i can't there are so many times in the studio with with matt and over at shards where like just random nonsense happens and we like we we bust a gut laughing i i i'm constant i'm really good at like I'll play something complicated, right? And it'll be going great. We'll be going at a good clip. And I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And it'll be like, oh, man, we got to punch in this, like, short part. That's, like, three notes. Go ahead. And I'm like, all right, all right, cool. Dude, I mess it up every single time. <laughs> like, every single time. All you got to do is play those three notes on beat, man. Yeah. And every single time I screw it up. And I'm just like, why can't I do this? <laughs> You ever see the meme of the one guy playing guitar and he's like getting mad at himself and he's yelling, he's like Scottish or something, like shaking the shit out of any guy. Like yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, just really quickly, Rasputin's dick has to check out. So thank you for checking in. We appreciate it. Get back oh, to work. Dude, thanks um, for being here, guys. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, you were just hitting on something before and I can't remember what I was going to say about it. Damn it. Um, I feel uh, like you I'll, can exhaust inspiration, but it's refillable. So you just got to like back off for a second and then it that's do also, exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, that's also a good point. It's you, you, you can burn your, you can burn out yeah. like, like, and that, that goes, that goes physically, like you're playing, um, that goes for mentally, like your, your inspiration as well as like remembering stuff. <laughs> I remember um, I remember during the recording process, like we were going over a song, and like I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and it's just like blank completely, and I'm like scared because so I'm like, how did I? I wrote this. How did I forget how it goes? Like I wrote it, and but dude, that's you just like you, like you said, you just gotta stop. Like give yourself yeah. a minute to like recoup. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a muscle you can like overuse it and then it just gets like blown out. Same thing. Um, yeah. When um, so when like you are do you are you are the songs like you playing one guitar track and 
Matt on drums, or is it all kind of over the place? Are you adding, or like, is there, like, what kind of others are you building up, like, uh, you know, bass part, you, part, guitars, whatever? Are you asking, like, are you asking, like, how I put them together? Um, I guess so. Like, when you're writing them, yeah. like, you're kind of writing them, like you're saying, like, singer-songwriter style. Um, how do they kind of transform? Like, are you being like, oh, I hear a guitar part, he an extra guitar part here, or? Yes, what, yeah. What, Sure. Um, some, so, like I like I mentioned before, a, a lot of the songs that I had, I had already been playing by myself. So it was just me and my acoustic guitar, right? Um, I actually have this. I don't know if I'll be able to like show this off with the camera and everything. I have a um. I I have a system that is a dual wheeled amplifiers. So I have, I uh, really hope this doesn't screw up the camera. Hello, Ben. I think Ben just joined. Hello, Ben. And uh, uh, Gamer, good point. He, he brought up uh, another thing musicians always compare themselves to their idols. Man, I suck. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. We do that all the time. We're really good at it. Okay, so let me just talk about this real quick, and then I'll get back to your question. Oh, like, yeah. Give us so the I've got this. Give us the guitar. Yeah. Or... yeah. So I've got – um. so this is my – this is one of my amps. This is my PV over here. And then over here, ignore the mess. Over there, you'll see I have a Fender amp with gear loaded on top of it. Um. So basically what happens is I take this – beautiful acoustic guitar behind me um and it's got its own internal jack um so it's got its own internal pickup system that i connect to the pv and then i have an external um jack uh, that sits in the sound hole oh. and that goes into the fender and um yeah and that allows me to kind of that allows me to to really mess around with the sounds and like get a get a lot of like crazy stuff, sure, but it also allows me to make like really rich sounds. Like I do enjoy the natural sound of an acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. and using those two system, the two amplifiers, and using that system, I can really like bring out some of the tones and some of the sounds that you don't necessarily hear through like a single pickup. Mm -hmm. um, so. To go back to your question about recording the songs at Shard's recording studio, I uh, a lot of the songs were started with that. So, like, for instance, we have a couple tracks where um, I have a clean tone coming out of one amplifier, and I have a really distorted, cool. like, heavy tone coming out of another Is he amplifier. Are those? Uh, uh, yeah, cool. yeah. He he. Yeah. So what? And what he'll do? He'll set up microphones in front of the amplifiers to get like the sound that's coming out of them. He'll also set up a um, microphone like on the other side of the room so that he can capture the room tone. Yep. And then on the mixing board, what he'll do is like, he'll just balance them out. So it kind of like gets a full sound. But if you're listening to it on the headphones and if you're like got your face up to the speakers, you'll hear the panning happen and a cool thing that we were able to do on a couple tracks, it didn't happen all the time, but a couple of the tracks, it legitimately sounds like two guitar players mm -hmm. only because like they're just a tiny bit out of phase. Yep. So like, so that the, the signals kind of sound like two guys playing it. And it's just me. It's just one dude playing. And it was wild. It was so much that fun. Um, cool. So we'll, we'll start with that system. And um, then I'll, write a baseline for it. Um, sometimes we'll, sometimes we'll add, um, texture to it with like other guitar parts. I actually, I've, I've used, um, sometimes I've brought in like my BC bridge oh, yeah. and like, like I've just to add, like add like, a lead part over it. Go ahead. No, I've never played one. It's, I mean the, the, BC Rich Warlock is made for heavy metal. Mm -hmm. You don't play anything else on it. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> like you just, it's not made for anything else, which is fine. Yeah. Like, I have, 
my arsenal of guitars and stuff, actually, it ranges from, so for instance, I've got like my Agile here. This is an Agile 3010. Um, this is a great guitar for like leads and like, it's got a very like bluesy yeah. sound to it. Um, so like for, I have instruments for a specific tone, you know what I mean? But then I also have instruments like I've got, I've got my Ibanez over here. And I mean, this sucker plays everything. Mm -hmm. Like it's so versatile. It's insane. Um, Bad Temple. So that's. Thanks for joining. What's up, Bad Temple? <laughs> also, Gamer, thank you for. I saw the compliment. I wasn't able to answer you right away, but thank you very much. Um, yeah, when, when it comes to sounds and what noises I like and what I want to hear in the songs, um, it's I, I go all over the place so often that um, one of the jobs <laughs> that Matt has is to kind of like stop me from over orchestrating. Oh, that's I, a big one. Yeah, I'm really good at that i'll just keep layering layering and layering until it sounds like yeah. mud and that's my fault <laughs> like, that's just me being excited about like different sounds i can make you know of course yeah i, I feel like it's part of the process to go overboard but you have to remember there is also the process after that of pulling everything out that really doesn't need to be there and yeah that's a loss that hurts sometimes. yeah agreed i i think that that mindset, however, uh, clashes with my impatience. I have, well, I get I get excited about like whatever it is that I'm working on, and what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That I just I want to hear I want to hear the final product. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like especially if you've got a lick that you really like, or like, like you can hear it up here. But yeah, um, yeah, to, yeah, and you're just like so stoked to hear what it sounds like when it's all finished that you like i get really impatient sometimes and uh creating music normally is uh you gotta have a little bit of patience because like you gotta you gotta tune in and and tweak it until it the tones are hitting how you want it because mm -hmm. otherwise you're gonna be kind of left disappointed is the wrong word but you'll, you'll be left uh Wanting, you know? Yeah, slightly like, unfulfilled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, unfulfilled, yeah. yeah. It, you'll feel almost as if, like, well, those are the notes, and that's the song, but, like, why doesn't it feel right? Yeah. And it's like, no, you got to be a little more patient with it. That's why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. Like, the whole, like, uh, we always have this debate. I try to not. Click track is great, especially for demoing. I will, I will love it to just be able to quickly sketch out stuff and snap things around and arrange it. But when I like when I try to go to record it, I like to try to let the drummer or like play together and try to get the mm -hmm. drum track like that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I do it both ways, but um, when when we can, we try to do it like as much of a band as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things I found out early on is that I suck playing to a click track. Oh, yeah. I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah. I'm always, like, just kind of wandering off. Um, but Matt actually, he had the idea one, one time. He was like, hey, what if, what if I just mocked up, like, a really, like, simple, really, like, crappy, like, drum loop and just yeah. played that? And I was like, cool, let's try that instantly <laughs> i'm talking dude i'm talking like night and day in the yeah. same session and when we finished using it that time i was like i'm never using a click track again like you're we're doing that and he goes yep yeah sounds good but <laughs> yeah it, it was yeah go ahead <laughs> I, I feel like when it's just a click like that, or even if I hear a click with the drum set, I'm, I'm almost like hyper focused on the click to make sure I'm in time instead of just being like the drums are there, just play along to them and yeah, kind of fall into it. There, there's something more organic about having the drum loop play. It feels it, it, it just feels more natural. Mm. Um, I I don't know what the actual 
reason behind that is or what the cause is, but I believe it has something to do with like, like for, for some musicians, they think in terms of like numbers, like they're constantly thinking like three, four, five, three, four, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like they yeah. basically have a metronome going on. And for some other, for some other artists, I believe that there's like a, almost like filling in negative space. Cause like when I'm thinking of like, when I'm thinking of like playing with a drummer, like they're they're adding kind of inside of beat uh, syncopated rhythms, you know, and so you're you're not necessarily worried about filling in the rhythm as you are like creating melody lines, mm -hmm. like even in even in in the rhythm parts of a guitar, like even though it's it's meant to help keep time there's um still chord progressions and melodies happening within it so i think i think sometimes like for, for some guys at least we key into the the melodies that are happening yeah the voices if you will uh that are happening whereas some guys like they're thinking purely in like numbers you know <laughs> Like they're I'm, called drums. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know, man. Those prog rock guys. I mean, they do math <laughs> equations in their heads, man. Like I've I've watched tutorials like how to play some of those guitar parts, and I'm like, I can't think that fast. Like I don't yeah. know how you got to do that. Uh, I'm definitely not a shredder, but uh, I, it always <laughs> does interest me. It, it feels like uh, they always say it's like the technicality versus feel yeah which side right you, okay which, which way do you lean at? um yeah i don't know i always feel like i'm i, I tend to lean towards feel because i can't play very fast <laughs> but some people can really uh yeah really rip it yeah, yeah game, gamer agrees with you almost like playing uh click versus playing by feel yeah mm -hmm. well there's also let's see because like even if you're using the organic like or the organic sounding like drum loop like you're still technically playing to a kind of like a metronome you're still technically playing to a click mm -hmm. track it's just that like the noises maybe there's something to the effect of like the echo and the reverberation that goes with mm -hmm. it as well mm -hmm. you know because a click track is very like start and stop yeah so you almost feel as if you have to be that precise as well I, and there's also something about the tone of it that it just gets hammered into my brain so much that your mind almost kind of like wants to tune it you out. You phase it out. Out. You don't hear it yeah, anymore. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. So yeah. after a while, it's just like, oh my God, I guess I just hear fatigue. <laughs> but yeah, it could be brutal. <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe it's, I, I don't know what it's, a, what it's uh, defined as, but it's that same thing that happens when you have like a ticking clock in a room. Eventually you just don't hear it. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, but, yeah, that, that sounds like the same thing, yeah. So, um, I pulled some, like, music news. I don't know if you want to talk about stuff like that, or you want to talk uh, lyrics, or, um, uh, Which like... Hit me, man. With, what's that? <laughs> hit me, whichever you want to talk about. I'm um, gay. I guess just really, uh, really quickly, let's go through, like, do you... Do you, when you're writing lyrics, are you just kind of doing what's coming? Like what's, I don't know. How, like, how does that work? Do you have the lyrics ready to go? Or are you writing them in um, studio? Is there like a thread that you're trying to tie? Like, how do you put all this into an album? Um, well, specific, okay. So specifically for the album, uh, a lot of, it was very uh, introspective. Mm which I think is normal for like people when they make their first album, they, they do a lot of like talking about themselves. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot, a lot of the, a lot of the lyrics come about with uh, inspirations from like kind of all over the place. Uh, I'm very much inspired by, you know, like nerdy, stuff like movies and video games and things like that nature but 
when it comes time to like write lyrics, for instance, um, let's see. For instance, the very first song on the album is called Insomnia, and um, the that song is very, very obviously written about like me having insomnia because I'm a raging insomniac. Um, oh, okay. It's something, yeah, it, it's that, something right? I've had ever since I was a kid. Um, but when I, I, so when I wrote that song and when I was in the lyric writing process, I, with some poetic license, I was really just talking about like what it does to my head. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so there were parts of it that sound kind of morose and, um, and a bit of sadness to it. But like, I was never, one thing I'm, I'm very ardent about is even when I'm talking about a sad subject, I don't want to give anybody like a bad time. Like I'm not trying to make anybody depressed. Mm -hmm. So like, even though I was talking about a subject that for me at least was very like heavy, um, it was, I, I spun it in a sense to um, kind of make it a bit more cerebral. Like I talked about the intellectual side of it or, or whatever. Yeah, I'm making it sound very dry. It's It sounds a lot better in music form, <laughs> I swear. Um, <laughs> Oh, I like to know um, on, on, yeah, yeah. on both sides. Of course. Also, hello to Kate Cloutier. I, I hope I said your name right. <laughs> I just saw you tuned in. Um, yeah, so so lyrics for me um, usually start with a concept, and then I kind of blossom it out from there. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, one of the songs I wrote with uh, DHR is called Hardcore Punk Things. And um, that I'm also, I'm also the type of musician where like, I need to have an instrumental first. Mm. Like I can come up with a concept, sure, mm. without music, but in terms of like writing down lyrics, like I know some guys, they do like a free writing exercise and they kind of like move it around and put it in <sighs> melodies. I'm not that kind of guy. I yeah, need a, right. need an instrumental to go off of yeah. because it also kind of like how it feels, how the music feels rather, um, kind of helps inspire like how the song is going to turn out and the lyrics. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so for hardcore punk things, like they had this really like really like rhythmic heavy, um, and Angela was doing this like kind of tribal drum in the beginning of it, which I thought was awesome. So it kind of made me think of like the aspect of the mosh pit that's a bit like tribalism. Yeah. Like everybody's kind of, like everybody's kind of like thrown down, but like the whole point is not to hurt anybody, right? Mm -hmm. and from there, I just kind of let my mind wander for a little bit and it began talking about how mosh pits kind of create riots under the wrong circumstances you know and how a lot of that is i mean in in regards to the lyrics of that song how a lot of those negative aspects happen because of outside forces like police getting involved when they don't need to be you know that sort of thing um and that's that's kind of how my mind goes when i'm writing lyrics for either songs for myself or songs for dhr um songs for other people because I get hired out to kind of write lyrics sometimes for other people. Um, they, I, I let my mind kind of center on one concept and just let that kind of like wander for a little while and, and see what comes up. And then if it, when I feel like I have a sufficient enough uh, inspiration and influences happening, then I hone in on like the point, you know what I mean? Like, because I, I don't like, I like free writing as a way of like getting ideas. But when it comes time to like actually finish the song, yeah. I like it to have a point, yeah. you know? Um, so, yeah, some guys are better at, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guys are better at writing uh, like kind of ambigu ambiguous like feelings yeah. and making it sound really cool. I'm not, I, that's not me. <laughs> that's not how I do it. <laughs> so. We have about like five minutes left. You, you touched on something. Where do you think uh, mosh pits began? Like, where where does that where does that um, ritual even come from? Like, 
Is it the punk um, scene? I don't even know. I believe I'd have to do a, a bit more research. By the way, hello to King Telekinesis and hello following back fast. I just saw you guys join in. Thanks for um, joining, guys. Yes, thank you for joining. Yeah. So the the try the mosh pit thing. There's a couple of ideas that it came from, like the punk scene. Everybody was kind of like during the punk scene, like everybody was kind of like doing these dances, um, and some of the dances were purposefully like violent looking because they wanted to like get a rise out of people, right? Yeah. Especially in the UK scene, they had a lot of, of those. But they were st they were still dancing, you know what I'm saying? Like they the I think the mosh the mosh pit at least in part I believe happened with um, like heavy metal was on the rise and people were really they were kind of pushing back against like the glam scene and they were pushing against the punk scene. They were like, we want to be more hardcore than the punks. We don't want to be pretty like the glam scene. And I don't know who started it but the idea of a mosh pit is actually super old because tribes yeah as they like in um what's up <laughs> what's up king <laughs> i've been all right man just answering some questions on the interview um oh, what was i saying oh the tri yeah tri tribes during their war dances you know to get That's themselves really interesting. like yeah. Get get themselves the their adrenaline going and everything. There's actually oh, I wish I could remember which music video it was. There's a music video that uh interpolates clips of mosh pits from like heavy metal shows and tribal dances. <laughs> and like and it's really it's so gnarly. it looks so cool because it's so clearly like one for one, you know what I mean? The um you know the you know the windmill move they do oh, in yeah. some hardcore dances? They <laughs> take each other's hand and, like, two guys, like, yeah, windmills yeah. for a while. They have clips of, like, tribes doing that, yeah. like, during their war dances. Interesting. So, like, just, yeah. So I, I, I think there's something weirdly instinctual about, like, everybody getting, like, their adrenaline up and, like, kind of, like, pushing and shoving. Yeah. But it's it's more of a way to like enforce the camaraderie yeah. as, as opposed to like, you know what I mean? As opposed to like, like I'm showing you that I'm the alpha. Like every, instead it's more like, yeah, let's go to, uh, let's do it. Like, let's go. Yeah. It's so, almost like a faux war. Have yeah. you ever crowd surfed? I have. Yes. Yeah. Um, I haven't done that in a while. Oh, no, a lot of clubs. I, I mean, Oh. Nah, man, you get me in the right DHR show, oh, I'll totally. Okay. Yeah, all right. yeah. Under those circumstances, but like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. not while everybody's sitting down. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think Same. they would appreciate that <laughs> if, I, if I took a running dive while <laughs> into a crowd of people sitting on chairs. <laughs> I think they may not enjoy that. Just please video. <laughs> Tape it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That'd be punk as Just fun. See a, <laughs> see a bunch yeah. of arms and legs and like plastic white chairs just kind of like fly off. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have anything? Let's just quick hit on one more thing and then we'll um, talk a little bit about the show coming up or whatever else you want to plug at the end. Sure. Um, do you have, what do you, what are you listening to right now? Like what are the new things or whatever? What's, what's coming out or what are you getting into right now? And how does that inspire the record or what, whatever you're doing now? Um, well, I've been listening to a lot of, Lately, I've been listening to a lot of um, geez, metalcore stuff, dubstep, like electronic music. I'm kind of all over the place. It because I equate. I mean, I'm sure like a lot of people do this, but like I, um, I equate a lot of, of emotional baggage to music. You know, positive stuff as well as negative stuff. Like not necessarily just like negative things mm -hmm. um so like some days i'm like man i need metal i mean i'm a metal head. i, I I'm, I'm a metal head so like yeah. i like i will always love heavy music 
-hmm. But like some days I'm like, man, I just want to hear somebody like play piano and sing. Or like some, some days I'm like, I need acoustic guitars or like cause, uh, country western stuff. I like a lot of the outlaw country stuff that's happening right now. Uh, there's a modern resurgence of like, I think it's it, it's kind of a backlash in a way against like that kind of poppy country sound. We have a lot of dudes who are doing like, well, girls too, who are doing like um, bluesy kind of dirty sounding like country western tones and, um, you know, singing about serious subjects as opposed to like making party songs. Yeah. Um, and uh that's that's kind of stuff that i'm into i i like that kind of stuff uh, i also like i dabble in listening to nerdcore like sea shanties are a really cool gamer yes <laughs> i love me a good sea shanty uh i've i've covered a couple of them um probably i should probably try to co cover a couple more we um, the mollusk yes uh yeah, that, that's a good yeah. shanty album, like style anyway. I feel like. Yeah, and there's also um, there's stuff like well, I mean, the Wellerman was a song that blew up for a while. Everybody was covering that one, but there's also um, uh, there's a couple songs like there's a song called "Leave Her Johnny," which uh, has been covered ad nauseum for like hundreds of years. Um, that one's that one's really nice. Um. Uh, sorry, I got off track again. The yeah, I I love looking for stuff that, that I haven't heard of as well. Mm. Like there's a lot of international acts right now oh, yeah. that yeah. that a lot of people are showing love because like we have the internet now, and the internet as stupid as it can be sometimes, <laughs> it's also it, it's also brilliant because it like bridges the gap between like countries sometimes so you can get really cool bands like uh shepherd's rain and um bloody wood they're out of check india them. check them out yeah there's and they're just they're super dope like there's um uh, there's a band called alien oh. weaponry oh, i yeah. believe yeah. Yeah. yeah they're they're maoris i believe Is like the they're the statue yeah yeah, yeah. Crazy. And it's just great. Like, we can see that now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. back in the 80s, like, we would have never seen those guys. But, like, <laughs> now, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, but now, with the, like, for all the horrors that the internet has, like, we, we have so many influences and inspirations yeah. now. And, uh, and you, get, you know, even if, because we're talking about, you know, my album, we're talking about the DHR stuff, you know, you guys with Bellwether, like, even if you don't end up using a direct inspiration or influence from another band or another um, musician, just listening to them oh, yeah, will absolutely. will uh, yeah. create something, you know? Yep. Actually, you hit on something. Uh, we'll, we'll do this as last question, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, but I don't know, do you listen to, like, um, Spirit Box at all? They, they recently, this is the new thing I was getting at. They recently went on a tour with, um, or they're supposed to tour with a band called Falling in Reverse, which I guess the singer is kind of like. Um, yeah, I've been hearing about do, you know, do you know this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. he's yeah. It, uh, Spirit Spirit Box and Falling in Reverse have been kind of like popular with like kids. I say kids. I yeah. just mean younger people. Same here. Um, <laughs> um, I've listened to both bands and like they're bo they both got. They both got tracks that, like, I think are really killer. Um, I don't know everything about the Falling in Reverse guy, but I do know that he is, like you said, polarizing. He's got some, like, controversies and stuff that follow him. Did you um, hear what happened? I didn't hear specifically what happened between them, but so, I did hear that Spirit Box, like, pulled out yeah, yeah. and, like, canceled. Do so they think it was from pressure from their fans? Like, um, yeah? Yeah, that's what they're saying. I hope, I hope. Well, I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, it, it's a really interesting scenario. Like, you're you're a successful band who can be on a very successful tour, and then your fans are like, that's just crazy. I don't know. I, I, don't know what I would do. so 
without knowing that without knowing the details going That's off true. with no details this whatsoever. Is total, like yeah allegedly if it's it, if it's if it's something where like the if it's something where the fans are like hey did you know that like this dude is guilty of blah 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 mm-hmm. that's one thing but if it's if it's something like hey we don't like falling in reverse like that's yeah you know what i mean cuz like i i'm going to cuz i'm going to i'm going to uh, again without knowing any details so before mm-hmm. everybody yells at me in the comments i don't <laughs> know what's going on between spirit box and falling in reverse um it could be something legitimate where they're like hey we're out because, like, something, like, actually happened. Sure. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> but in regards to, like, fans impressing upon bands to, like, make a decision about that, like, I mean, we lived through that. We had Nickelback. <laughs> Remember when all the... You know what I mean? No, yeah. but, like, seriously, like, like, I'm not a huge fan of them, but, like, if a band that I liked was touring with Nickelback, like, and, and then the fans were, like, Nah, don't tour with Nickelback. Yeah, I don't understand. That's like, stupid. <laughs> That's like yeah. you're you're abusing the love of the musician and by the like one was basically laughing at them, like, the manipulating yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, Nickelback. You're, you're telling them. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you, bro. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like Nickelback's the ones laughing all the way to the bank you know like they're yeah. super successful and all that shit like why the hell wouldn't you do that because yeah. of what some people say but yeah if it, to me what I'm what I heard it was kind of a little bit of more like hey this guy you know but then I, it got me thinking like he's just not a good person or whatever which I don't know whatever but it got me thinking like um <laughs> like back, back in the day that was the entire music industry like you that was part of it I feel like you like yeah. nobody, there are a lot of not so savory people, I guess. So. Well, we, we, yeah. There's, we got to You and I actually, we have talked about this somewhat in other conversations. Like, there's a culture shift. Oh, yeah. I mean, there always, there always is. Like, culture changes, and the culture that surrounds music is no different. Like, oh, it, it just. It, it mutates as time goes on. So, like, we have to roll with it. And we all, but, like, I think it's also important, like, it's important for us to listen when the fans say stuff. Like, when the fans say stuff like, hey, stop acting like a prima donna. We don't like that. That's, like, that's a po- like that's a positive thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're right. We should check our ego. Because it used to be that, like, the bigger your ego, the more popular you were. Mm. Like, people are kind of, like, shying away from that now. Like, people don't, we don't need actual bros. <laughs> You know, the thing. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Tell him I said that. Yeah, I'm going to do But, um, but it, there's also, there's also responsibility for the musicians, I think, to also put their foot down it, it, realistically. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's like great to be, be, able to, yeah. be able to be adults about it. Like, don't just kowtow to the audience. Mm. Listen to them. Of mm-hmm. course, but if like the the Nickelback example, like if they're simply saying, "Hey, we don't like that band," I don't care. Yeah. Like I, you know, I'm on a tour. You're here to see me. Yeah. Be, There's room for be there to see me. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, if it's if it's like how you said, if it's if it's uh, an example of like someone being like sketchy, like that's different. That's yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember the band Blood on the Dance Floor. Do you remember those guys? Mm, I know the name, but I don't. Uh, I yeah, don't know they got into them. It was not. It was not a band that I listened to, but they were super popular when I was in like high school and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it came out that like, I mean, their singer is a douchebag. Mm-hmm. He's like the worst version of what There's a singer a, is supposed to be. You know, a lot of people that I used to listen to that have been ruined by reading books about them or internet stories. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah. And he was. I mean. That was, that's a that's a great example of like the fans just started like hammering this dude like don't do tours with this guy we hate him and then many I, bands like uh, I believe like the Birthday Massacre and um, as funny as it sounds Insane Clown Posse mm. you know those guys were all like yeah you know what we're we're cutting ties and like we're we're done we're not doing anything. 
with them, like that's that's a positive slant on it. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a responsibility of the musicians and the uh, audiences to kind of like remember, like there's a difference between um, there's a difference between like like keeping the culture like clean and impressing upon someone your own opinion. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you want you want everybody to ha- have a good time and be safe and like you want everybody to have good vibes like and, and it's funny to think about because we have examples like death metal and and stuff you know really you know what I mean like really like, yeah. <laughs> violent aesthetics and like you you think like they don't care about the no they do yeah. they they really do mm-hmm. like. Everybody wants to have a good time and leave the show and be like, yeah, that was killer. Like, we love that was cool, you know? Absolutely. All right, well, how about we, um, why don't you plug uh, plug that show or whatever else you got coming up, and then, yeah, we can wrap well, this up for this time. Yeah, in May, we've got Rock on the Run, and we also have, uh, what is that, May 13th at Jab- uh, yeah. Jaws. Yes, yeah. come check that out. It's- DHR, uh, the band that I front, as well as you, sir, will be there uh, mm-hmm. with Bellwether Ritual. Looking forward to that. Oh yeah. Um, I am finishing. I'll be. Re- I, w- I will be releasing singles from my upcoming solo album, Come Hell or High Water. Um, I don't have a fixed date for that, but I will in the next few weeks. Um, I, of course, will be continuing to do stuff with DHR and be um, continuing to give dates for solo stuff that I'll be doing. Um, and I have a heavy metal project that is oh, in its yeah, constant we phase. That. Yeah. We did, uh, that's not, not a whole lot of information for that yet. Okay. Um, the project is called Fatal Brutality, and I will be... I will, I will be once again fronting that, um, still putting together, like, songs and stuff. There's riffs and licks and stuff being made. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping within – I'm going to conservatively say, like, two or three weeks, I'll have at least, um, like, a song or something to be able to share with people. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's, that's an exciting thing because DH – the solo album is a lot of, um, like, a, 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 I can't say acoustic-based because there's a lot of, like, elect- electric guitar, too. Um, but it, it's very much, like, um, kind of a rock-oriented, like, I do much more singing on the solo album than anything else I've done. Um, DHR is kind of, like, a hybrid. I'm doing a lot of, like, the guttural vocals and a lot of, like, the singing vocals as well. And um, that's obviously more hardcore punk oriented. Uh, Fatal Brutality will be uh, probably no singing at all. Oh, really? <laughs> like it's it's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be all gutturals, nice. which is it's gonna be an interesting challenge for me, but it's also really fun. I'm really excited about cool. that because I've been I've been working on the versatility of the sounds, and I'm hoping that I'll have a chance to like showcase that. You know what I mean? Uh- so awesome. yeah, that's all the stuff I'm, yeah, that's all the stuff I'm doing. Cool. All right. <laughs> if, well, if you guys are, uh, if, if anybody watching is, um, subscribed to, or a fan of my YouTube channel and you missed the, um, covers, I just want you to know, I am going to return to the covers eventually. I can't right now. I just don't have the time. Um, I do want to get back to those cause those are fun for me. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing some of the previous videos and stuff, uh, you can head on over to my YouTube channel, Johnny Five the Philosopher, um, and see that <laughs> Gamer wrote, "Oh sweet, water drainage vocals." That's Not nice. all the time. It's <laughs> 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 a. <laughs> Have you seen? Have you seen? You there's a clip. I, I gotta find a clip and, and show you. Have you seen the clip? There's a guy who like ran water in his metal sink and like put a microphone up to it, 
and it sounded exactly like like death metal vocals. It was really funny. Uh, so there's a there's one where there's like a camel. They did something with a camel like that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. I've seen that one. That's good too. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that's a good note to end on. Yeah. Uh, until next week. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm off next week. Yay. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Johnny Five, the philosopher. Check him out. Um, all over the socials. Looking forward to all the good stuff coming up. And yep. yeah, we will. Well, we'll all we'll be playing soon, but um, I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks for doing this again. Can't can't wait to play with you, man. Can't yeah, wait to talk to you guys more. Show. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> cool, man. Have a good night. Thank Have a good night, bro. Chats too. We appreciate yep. you jumping. Later, in. everybody. Cool. Have a good night. Bye, bye. <laughs>